I didn't think anything of it. So uh, at that point, I said, you know, I'm just not going to answer the door. If he comes back, you know, whatever. Um, so I went back to work and I was working away editing videos for you guys. Um, and then at about four o'clock, I had another knock on the door and there was two guys there. And uh, one of them asked if I wanted, I didn't open the door very far, but one of them asked if I wanted my walks shoveled. And I said no and went to close the door. And when I went to close the door, they shoved the door in. Um, I screamed as loud as I could. You know, um, one of the discussions this week has been uh, maybe I need to take a self defense course. You know, I've taken them. I, there just really wasn't much you could do, and we'll get through that. But so I screamed as loud as I could. The neighbor did hear me and she acknowledges that she heard me, but she thought it was her mom falling down the stairs. So when she looked at that, went and checked on her mom and her mom was fine, she just kind of left it. And they say that in home invasions, that's often what happens, like they'll break a window, you only hear the noise once and nobody goes to look. If they hear the noise twice, they'll go look. So that's a pretty common thing to happen. So they shoved me to the ground and at that point I'm like clutching for life to my phone. Um, and they hit me across the head a few times. When I wouldn't let go of my phone, they hit me again and said give us the phone. So I gave them the phone because I post concussion syndrome so getting hit across the head, not so fun. I hear a noise like someone shuffling through papers or something or he's trying to look through drawers. A security camera in the family's home helped police identify the man as 23 year old Thomas Coughlin, a local landscaper. He was arrested and charged with burglary and theft. Uh, so at that point they were covering my eyes with their mittens um, and then they went and got a pillowcase from somewhere else in the house and then put a pillowcase over my head. Um, and then they zip tied my hands tightly together and you can't see them now I mean there's maybe a little mark here or two on my hands but when we were in the ER um, there was like bleeding on my hands and like I had pretty red marks around my wrists Trisha, this is how they got in through this window. You can still see the damage to the frame and to the blinds inside. This was only after up to three men had stalked this home for hours. The victim says he wasn't sure what was happening, but that's when he heard somebody 
jump through this wall. Kind of sitting low, you know, and I, because I was starting to hear the sounds over there. His home about to be invaded, Joy Imerdi stood guard, watching the front and back. That's when he says a man appeared, a mask on his face, a hammer in his hand. Imerdi gave just one warning. Freeze and uh, don't move. But the man moved. Imerdi fired. The only thing he hit, the walls and the living room. You weren't shooting to kill. No, I wasn't shooting to kill. That's why I aimed down. But if my gun didn't jam, I definitely would have hit him. Tonight, clues that could lead to a capture. Imerdi says he saw at least two men and a new black challenger. And the moments before this window was jimmied open. They have pried against the metal and it actually unlatched the lock. Leaving behind fingerprints. We're told neighbors saw the men hanging around the house all day. Imerdi says they even rang the doorbell for at least 10 minutes before the invasion. Um, and so it was, I was pretty tightly tied with zip ties. Um, they tied me in the front, so at least I had a little bit of movement. Um, the, the pillowcase was really tight to begin with, and I just asked them to let me breathe. Oh my god. Hey, wait. and they did that. Um, so then they were asking where the safe was and uh, you know, I didn't know, I'm a guest in someone's house, like I don't actually know there might be a safe, I didn't know. So I was like, I don't know. And they, I said, I think he keeps everything in the safe at the shop, right? So I don't, you know, I, I was like, I don't. So they kept asking for the safe and then they went upstairs. They were looking for guns and money specifically. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Gwinnett County Police Department. Someone down 911 from your cell phone. Did you need 911? Yes, somebody is coming here. My. What's your address? 3575 Spring Drive. Somebody's in your house? Yes, yeah, somebody coming in my house. I don't know how they come in. Um, so the guy was choking me out, but at that point, you know, if you don't know what it is to be choked out and how that feels, that can be a lot more devastating, I'm sure. So I know that I'm like, okay, let him choke me out. I know that I'm gonna come to, I'm gonna be okay. It's not gonna be very long, so they can't get me very far. Um, so I'm tied to uh, the gas line in the basement and they just keep saying don't move and as long as I don't move I don't get hit the second I even try to move I get hit. Hey you f up! You f up boy! I gotta get up! Calm down!
Stay down, Dwayne! Stay down! Oh my god! Oh god! Oh god! when they hear the alarm on the fridge they they take off and uh, and I can't hear anything or any noise for a few minutes and then I um, start moving to pull the pillowcase off my head hoping I'm not gonna get hit again and can't hear them or anything so pull that off and then um, ripped my hands out of the zip ties and um, went and went over to the neighbor and made some calls to the police and to Dobbs and that's when the neighbor acknowledged that she'd heard it and probably could have done something.